Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another top five. And we're going to look at the top five selling points of Ubuntu Budgie. Now, I don't think this is a perfect distro. Of course, there really are no perfect distros. But I'm going to identify the top five things that I think make Ubuntu Budgie a very nice system to, uh, to consider if you're looking for a good modern desktop environment. So number five is Ubuntu Budgie has a very nice theme and style to it. So this is mostly unchanged. I did change the plank to the Cairo dock. Uh, one of those was to resolve a little bug, and the other of those is, I just think Cairo dock is far more stylish than plank, but that's okay. That's a matter of personal preference. There is also a desktop clock that I did remove because I don't ever really use it, and the clock at the top of the computer is perfectly fine for me. Um, but regardless, everything else in the theming is very nice. Uh, there is a dark and a light theme. I believe this is the default. Um, just kind of stuck with it how it is. I do like the tr uh, slight transparency. The wallpaper, this is the stock wallpaper that is installed by default. And I just think that this is the greatest wallpaper that they have in there. So I just think it's uh, a very nice theme, a very nice style. And uh, so you can see over here what the different wallpapers look like. A lot of different things, of course. The only other one that's really cool I kind of like is this uh, more blocky one. But this one here is is just, just very beautiful. So that is my number five, is very nice theming and style. Number four is Budgie is very modern but flexible. This is one of those things I'm not a big fan of on, on the GNOME desktop is that without using third-party extensions that aren't built by the core uh, developers of, of GNOME, um, Budgie has a lot more flexibility in the style. I can change a lot more things around. Of course, you can pull up the Raven menu and go down here and click on your gear. And this brings up the Budgie desktop styles. Now, of course, the GNOME tweak tool will also help do some of these things as well. You can turn on or turn off dark themes, built-in themes, animations. You can set your desktop icons. Um, you can change your fonts. A lot of the things that a lot of people might want to do by default, you have the ability to do that. Of course, I can move my panel around as well. That's something else that you have a harder time doing in GNOME. And then there's a variety of different uh, options. So, you know, do create a shadow on it. What's the size of it? If I want to make it bigger or want to make it smaller, I can go ahead and do that. Um, so you can see that it's kind of kind of getting a little smaller there. Go ahead and keep it right around where it was. Uh, but anyway, we also had the ability to add a variety of applets quite a lot easier. Um, so it's just Budgie itself, it's modern, but it is flexible. Utilizes the Nautilus file manager and uh, it's a little bit, a little bit uh, less power, less system resources than GNOME. It comes in around 800 megabytes, whereas GNOME comes in around 1,000. Or, uh, did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, 800 megabytes, whereas GNOME is closer to about a gig or so. And so, M Budgie is, is a pretty good pretty good distro. If someone's like, put the gun to your head and said, you have to use a modern desktop environment, it would probably be Budgie. Number three, your codecs and your media. I have not had any problems at all. Um, I have installed Kodi. I have played some video. I have played some audio. I even installed Audacity so that I could uh, record some audio onto the system. I tagged it with KID3, uh, deployed those to my servers. Everything worked great in there. Uh, so I can say that uh, all of the multimedia, all the codecs out of the box, I haven't had any problems anywhere with the system as far as your, your media is concerned. Of course, we have Rhythmbox by default, and there might have been another one. Let me just have a quick look at what's in the sound and video. Um, the GNOME MPV is a very lightweight video player. I think that was installed by default, and Rhythmbox was installed by default. I, I added Audacity, uh, GTK, uh, Camera Viewer, Kid3, Kodi, and simple screen recorder and possibly VLC. I can't remember if I added VLC or if it was in here by default. Um, but uh, no problems with any of those. The only issue is if I uh, increase my camera up to 1080p, it's a little laggy. That possibly has more to do with the fact that this computer has a shared APU. I don't have any dedicated graphics card. And so I wouldn't fault a system for that. I would, if I was concerned that would be a problem, I would take this install. I'd run it on the other computer that has a dedicated graphics card and I'd see how it performs over there. Uh, but regardless, your codecs and your media work great out of the box. 
Number two is your software capabilities. Now, this is this is both a, a blessing and a curse in a way. Um, but the default software center, uh, which is the GNOME software center, I personally argue is the worst software center that there is. I actually found some applications that were not available in here. For one example is Thunderbird. Now you will see Thunderbird in here when I, uh, when I search for it. And the reason is I had to install Thunderbird. Now um, it installs per perfectly fine from the terminal. Uh, so if I boot up the terminal and uh, did the uh, sudo apt, can I spell today? <laughs> sudo apt install Thunderbird. I was able to install Thunderbird using this command without any changes to the system. Um, however, uh, it was not actually in the software center. So I don't know what is the issue that the software center does not have all of the software that is available to Ubuntu. So if you know what you want to install, you can install it all through the terminal. If you have to hunt and browse, the software center might disappoint. Uh, however, the other thing that Ubuntu has in 1804 is it has compatibility with both Snap and Flatpak. And so this comes in handy because the Snap and Flatpak uh, application systems will allow you to have a lot of good prepackaged applications. And with that being said, um, I was at, you can see I'm actually running Skype over here and it's running fine. I don't think I've tested an audio call on it yet. I just can't remember. Um, but uh, everything else on that works. But the challenge I had is that if you go to your software center and you can see that Skype is an editor's pick, I installed Skype here and it doesn't work. Uh, for whatever reason, Skype would not boot using the software center. So I installed Skype using, um, it was either a Snap or a flat pack. It might've been a flat pack because I don't think Skype is in Snap anymore, I don't remember. Um, but I, wherever I installed Skype from, it worked fine. Um, it was just a matter of the one in the software center doesn't work. So there's part of your curse is that you might have a couple different versions of software floating around. Some of them work and some of them don't. That's been my experience uh, so far. Uh, but the good news is you do have the software center. You do have the basic Ubuntu um, repositories. If you know how to access those in the terminal, you do have Snap and you do have Flatpaks. And so for that reason, I put that as a big uh, a big plus because you have a lot of varieties and, and capabilities, including the snaps and the flat packs, uh, which are uh, a good way to go. And my number one reason uh, to consider Ubuntu Budgie is for the most part, the system is very stable. I have had a couple little bugs that I will talk about in another video uh, detailing specifically the, the pluses and the minus. So I'm going to do a full comprehensive review of this. Um, but I'm going to identify some of those. But for the most part, other than a couple little odds and ends bugs, I found the system to be very stable. I've had uh, I've had a few cases where the system simply restarts itself. I have no idea why. Um, and there is actually a bug right now. Hopefully, it will be uh, resolved. And a lot of people I'm a, I understand are aware of it. That if the system if if the if the system goes to sleep. When you wake it back up, you don't have internet access anymore. You have to reboot the computer to get internet access back, which is kind of a little weirdness. Um, but uh, I, the developers, I believe, are aware of that, and this is a beta release. So hopefully that will be fixed. Other than those two issues, I've had no issues with anything crashing. I've had really no problems anywhere else. I've run Kodi, you know, uh, full screen as its own environment and as a windowed mode. I've run the Skype. I've played music. I've had multiple web browsers. I've had multiple email clients all open. Overall, I can say that the system itself works very well. Um, I do I do like the system. It's, it's nice. It's comfortable. It's kind of out of your way. It has everything that you need in it. Uh, just everything from, you know, your ability to access your documents up at the top from your screen. It's very handy if you're full screen and something you need to get to your documents, you can easily just come on down and do that. Just a lot of little fun little things that went into it. So this is a very nice build um, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out switch to linux.com forward slash support. You can find some Amazon links there and in the description below. I also have a PayPal link over there. If you want to just send a tip on PayPal, you can do that. And uh, you can also pick up uh, merchandise, uh, t-shirts, coffee cups. I also have things like this uh, mouse pad at shop.switchtolinux.com. That's available over there. And I'm on Patreon.
patreon.com forward slash tom m so thanks for watching this video and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux